Hello everyone, welcome back to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports and uh, we're in Marseille. It is baking down with, with, with heat. Uh, I think the box should be very thankful that they are playing at 9 o'clock tomorrow night because right now the sun is out. It is, to be fair, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It is the hottest day, point of the day and we are feeling the heat. And uh, who are not feeling the heat are the box. And we've just come out of a press conference with uh, assistant coach Mzwandi Listik, Dwayne Vermeulen, future coach, and uh, Kane Moody, future 13. A uh, very interesting press conference between the three of them, uh, just previewing the game tomorrow and giving a bit of insight into their personal um, sort of thoughts on the tournament and their plans and stuff like that. And it was quite interesting to see, uh, from, especially from the players' point of view, where Dwayne Vermeulen and where Kane and Moody see their future, uh, which is very interesting. So, uh, yeah, the press conference is on the channel if you want to go and check it out. But I thought I'd just do a bit of a video reacting to it and talking about what they had to say and, and you know, where I think that... Uh, where I do think that their future is going to be. So we'll start with Katie Moody, who was asked basically where his future lies. You know, he's, he started on the wing at, uh, at, at, international, well, at, at international and at union level, um, but traditionally was a 13 at school. And he's now in the last, literally about the last month, been thrust into that 13 role against the All Blacks. He played there against Romain and he will play there again tomorrow. And uh, he was asked basically, you know, where does he see himself? Does he see himself on the wing? Does he see himself at 13? What would he like? And he, he was quite frank about it. He said, you know, he said 13 is where he fell in love with the game. He fell in love with the position when he was at school. You know, he loves that outside center channel. That's where he thrives and that's where he really found that passion um, for, for the game. And uh, so he said that he's very hopeful that he, w that he will settle there. He's apparently he's had conversations with uh, Jake White. Um, he didn't expect it to happen at the Springboks, but uh, he said it was a huge backing for Jacques you know, about to come to him and say, listen, I want you to play at 13, especially given the defensive duties that the outside centre does have. Um, he does, yeah, what's, what's very interesting is he made no, um, made no mistake and uh, made no secret of the fact that 13 is where he wants to play. He doesn't want to be on the wing, he wants to be in 13, he wants to be in that centre um, pairing, he wants to be in the midfield, in the action. And I do think that he'll settle there. I think we've seen he's got the skill set. I think he makes a, for a terrific wing. But he's got all the makings of a great outside centre. It is a position that South Africa not been blessed with depth with recently. You've got Henker from Vey coming through, and uh, he does have to come back from, from a pretty big injury. But, uh, you know, Lacanya, I'm Jesse Creel, Kenny Moody, Henker from Vey, all of a sudden the depth started looking a little bit better. Uh, than what it did a few years ago when we basically just had Lacanya Am and Jesse Creel and even then people weren't particularly happy with Jesse Creel as an option although I do think that he's rightfully silenced a lot of his doubters in the past few games. Uh, Zordina Stick was asked about uh, the various uh, teams and the permutations, the New Zealand game last night, you know, the Wales performance for example uh, and you know quarterfinals how they're feeling and, and basically said they're not looking at the teams, they're focusing on themselves. You know, they said they can't speculate on what other teams are going to do, how, how other teams are going to perform you know, and they said that basically it will be dangerous to start getting ahead of themselves. And so, you know, from a game plan point of view, they don't worry about what the other teams doing. They're focused on themselves. So for not to, at the moment, the focus is solely on tomorrow. Get to tomorrow night, win that game, get the five points, then have a week of preparation, or two weeks really of preparation, uh, if they do get through to the quarterfinals, you know. But basically, it's about getting the job done. After that, the job's out of their hands. You know, they go back to Toulon, they continue preparing, assuming that they'll get into a quarterfinal, and they'll know in, in literally a week's time whether they will. And then finally, Dwayne Vermeulen gave a very interesting update about his future. He was asked, you know, he was, he was obviously in the coaching box a couple of weeks ago um, against Ireland. He was there and uh, he was, uh, you know, and a, a lot of people talking about the fact apparently he's had quite a lot to do with the defence. And uh, he was then asked, you know, do, does he see himself as a coach? Is this the next step of his career? And uh, he was quite honest about it. He said, you know, a couple of years ago, he would have never said that he would have gone into coaching. You know, he never really thought about it. Um, he says, but when you do come to the end of a career, which he's always very cautious to say, because I think he still absolutely loves playing, uh, you know, he says he wants to give back to the game. And he says that, you know, he thinks that if the opportunity does arrive and he gets the opportunity to coach, uh, he'd be very keen. There's actually been talk about the fact that he could potentially actually be involved in the swing box here from as near as, as next year type thing. You know, apparently they really do rate him uh, with regards to how he watches the game, how he understands the game and how he... Uh, you know how he can you know communicate the message. So I think he's quite highly rated. It's not very often that you see a player who's not even the captain necessarily in in the coach's box. Often you'll see players running water, but not often you see a player actually in the coach's box with a walkie-talkie in a World Cup situation, for example. And uh, given the fact that he has there, I do think he's got quite a strong uh, career in coaching. I think he communicates very well. I think he's a very impressionable person. I think he's someone that you can get behind quite quickly. He's quite inspirational. So I think it's all the attributes. Um, He's basically said that I think I think if the opportunity arose that he would go that way, 
I don't think he'll be short of suitors. As I say, I think he could be involved in the national setup, to be honest. Uh, if not, I think there will be a host of unions that will want him to be involved. Um, so, yeah, let me know what do you think. Dwayne Firmino is the next Springbok coach eventually down the line or a defence coach. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Um, if you are new to the channel, subscribe. Smash a like on the video as well. Please do share our content as well, near and wide. We are in Marseille. We'll be doing on-the-ground stuff for the match tomorrow. We'll be doing stuff all around the city, uh, which is going to be lots of fun. So, uh, yeah, please do consider su uh, supporting the channel. You can become a member, for example, or just sharing us around, getting other people to subscribe. Um, of course, all this coverage is always free on YouTube for you guys, and uh, so any support would be highly appreciated. Uh, coming to you, well, not live, but coming to you from Marseille, uh, this has been Stevie P for Forever Sports. See you soon.